it in the candy store Put the leather on the denim I ain't the cure, I'm the venom If you wanna find me, find the taillight Something's coming in, you're gonna wanna take a red eye It's time to go It's time to go Get ready Afternoon, mga kabansa. Good afternoon. At uh, narito tayo ngayon sa Ang Maestro sa YouTube channel. Episode 211, mga kabansa. At ito ay inyong lingkod, Ado Paglinawan, na nagpupugay ng isang uh, magandang araw, magandang gabi, depende kung saan parte kayo ng mundo na aruroon. No? At ang uh, pabagat po ng ating episode ngayon ay Severe Loss of Sovereign Territory. Uh, nung pong last week, mga kabansa, no? part 2 po ito, by the way, no? nung ating idiotization of the Filipino. Uh, ngayon lamang po ako naghati ng topic. Ito po yung ating topic last week. Idiotization of the Filipino and last week we showed why the proposed Maritime Zones Act is a hodgepodge legislation mga kabansa, that creates more problems than solutions. Nagsubmit po tayo ng apat na reasons. Yung una ay uh, ito po ay magtutuloy lamang ng pagkukulang o incompleteness ng Republic Act 9522, our new baseline law enacted in 2009, at meron po siyang mga implikasyones. At ang diniscuss nga po natin last week, at papasalahan uli natin ang kapraso this week, ay ang pagkawala ng 70,000 square kilometers. Square kilometers po mga kabansa of the Calayan Island Group na inalis ng Republic Act 9522 sa ating baselines and we will explain later why even this was affirmed by the arbitral ruling. And this week, mga kabansa, itutuloy natin ang ating explanation on how it further complicates matters. And we already started with Senate Bill 2492, ito po yung Maritime Zones Act, na nagsasabi na pati yung uh, Republic Act 9522 mga defecto ay hindi naman dito ginagamot. It does not cure. No? Our baseline slow passed in 2009 insofar as iba naman. Last week, yung Kalayan Island Group. This week, yung treaty limits, no? which we acquired by historical rights of title. Yung KIG po, yung Kalayan Island Group, we claim acquisition by Presidential Decree 1596. So, yung punto ko dito sa treaty limits, I we will illustrate this time, showing numerical consequences. Pangalawa, diniscussin din natin na uh, ang codification ng uh, uh, Senate Bill 2492 sa, sa 2016 arbitral ruling uh, reduces to absurdity the Philippine positions in the South China Seas so, ano itong victory na kineclaim ng mga proponents ng arbitral ruling? Pangatlo, papasadahan natin ang delusional reference sa tinatawag na West Philippine Sea. Alam po ninyo, simula ng administrasyon ni Noynoy Aquino na simula na natin pakinggan itong West Philippine Sea. Noon lamang, ano ba ito? At pinakahuli, why unilaterally seeding all artificial islands constructed inside the so-called Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone 
to the Philippine government uh, will make diplomacy harder to achieve a win-win solution to our problems in the South China Sea in order to avoid a possible hot war. So, punta na po tayo dito sa treaty limits. Alam po ninyo mga kamansa, uh, dito sa uh, Treaty of Paris of 1898, sa Treaty of Washington of 1900, at sa Treaty, uh, uh, tawag niyan, a Convention Treaty of 1930 between the U.S. and uh, Great Britain, designating the boundaries, the southern boundaries natin from North Borneo, I ito po, yung baselines ay pinaltan. Dinisregard nga itong epekto ng tatlong tratado na ito. At finished yun po ito, matapos mapasa at mapirmahan na ni Pangulong Gloria Makapagal-Arroyo, ay kunisyon ito sa Supreme Court. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court sa GR 187-167, the petitioner's assertion of laws of about 15,000 square nautical miles of territorial waters under RA 95-22 is similarly unfounded both in fact and law. On the contrary, 95.22, by optimizing the location of base points, increase the Philippines' total maritime space huh, covering internal waters, territorial sea, and exclusive economic zone by 145,000 square nautical miles, Ayan, as shown in the table below. We are not uh, we are not even agreeing that it was a loss of only ha uh, sinasabi dito uh, uh, ayan 15,000 square nautical miles but for purposes natin dahil hindi naman tayo nagsusukat tungkol sa mga milya-milya susukatin natin to in terms of kilometers dahil metric system po tayo sa Pilipinas so, ito ang ating chart, which is self-explanatory. Extent of maritime area, ayan, ang unang column. Epekto ng Republic Act 3046, nakasama yung Treaty of Paris Delimitations. And then, yung pangatlo ay Republic Act 9522, conforming to UNCLOS. Dahil yung po ang rason nila kung bakit uh, pinaltan ng baselines natin as close as possible to the land territory and internal waters to conform to UNCLUS as per its adoption in 1982 and its effectivity in 1944. So ano mga maritime areas? According to the judgment of the Supreme Court, ang internal or archipelagic waters ay 572 square kilometers na nag-increase pa daw sa 588,000 square kilometers. At pero ang territorial sea, aminado naman sila, ay nabawasan from 940,000 square kilometers to 110 square kilometers. And this actually is a loss of 830,140 square kilometers of sovereignty. Ah. Pangatlong raw exclusive economic zone. Dati wala. Ano ang exclusive economic zone? Extent of 200 nautical miles from the shores. No? from the baseline. Kaya nga, Adrino yung baseline. No? Mula doon, extending 200 nautical miles uh, outwards, no? hindi landward, kundi outward, ay nag-increase daw from zero to 1,000,000 1, 
106,000 square kilometers. Sa total, ah, ay nadagdagan daw ng 498,000 square kilometers to 2,010,644. Ayan po mga kamansa, no? Hindi ko na kailangan ituro pa. Dahil nandiyan naman sa inyong harapan. Dito po sa Exclusive Economic Zone, pakalan ay nag-gain tayo ng equivalent na 1,106,000 square kilometers, mga kabansa. Ayan. So, yan po naging desisyon. Ang ponente po ng desisyon na ito, walang iba kundi si Associate Justice Antonio Carpio. No? At ito ay inilabas ng Supreme Court noong August 16, 2011. At nakalagay po dito sa footnote sa itaas no? na yung figures na yan ay based on figures responded submitted in their comment. Hindi na po natin ibibigay yung submitted by the petitioners dito na tayo sa desisyon. No? Oo. So, klarong-klaro po -klaro na sa kanan, remarks by ang maestro, na walang tayo ng 830,140 square kilometers and we gain 1,106,724 square kilometers. Pero tandaan po ninyo, ang exclusive economic zone ay sovereignty rights, mga kabansa. Ngayon, ano ang technicalidad dyan? No? Bali po sa mga considerasyones, no? mga considerasyones, ay nagkakaroon po ngayon ng debate mula noong 2009 to 2011 up to the present time with the Philippines as a major participant whose position against China's historic rights definitely negates our own historic claims to the street limits. Bakit po, mga kabansa? Dahil hindi natin ina-accept ang historical rights ang historical claim ng China. So, kung hindi natin tatangkapin ang historical claim ng China, paano natin makiklaim pabalik itong nawalang treaty limits? Hindi ho ba? Apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So, nagtanggalin po yung treaty limits na yan, mga kabansa. No? And I am referring huh? Ito, lalagyan na natin ng uh, kulay para alam natin kung ano ating pinag-uusapan sa pula. Ito ho yung nawala na pinag-uusapan natin ngayon. Ayan, mga kabansa. Ayan. Yung pinag-uusapan natin last week ay ito po. Mga kabansa, ito, yung Kalayaan Island Group. Ayan, nakikita ninyo? Okay. Ang pinag-uusapan natin ngayon ay itong mas malaking uh, rectangle. So, para hindi ito uh, mawala, mga kabansa, no? para hindi ito mawala. Okay. Noong October, 1988, nag-submit tayo ng deklarasyon sa U.S. dahil pipirma tayo sa UNCLOS. Pag pumirma tayo sa UNCLOS, automatic mawawala ito. So, nag-declare tayo ng uh, exemption saying that the Philippines' compliance with UNCLOS shall not prejudice our historic rights to territorial sea by virtue of colonial treaty limits that may be recovered with the possibility of the adoption of the Philippines Archipelagic Doctrine, which is outside of UNCLOS. Ayan. 
And with all due respect to the late Miriam Defensor Santiago, that's siya nang naging author ng 9522 at sa lahat ng mga naging co-author, the asymmetry between sovereignty and sovereignty rights nung panahon na yun was not yet overwhelming dahil hindi pa ho nag escalate ng puspusan ang South China Sea conflicts between China and the Philippines. So, nung panahon na yun, ha, ay It doesn't really make any sense yet because the child, there were no challenges except this uh, case of Supreme Court na idunulong ni uh, Melvin Magaliona ng University of the Philippines isa sa mga tanyag na abogado sa ating bansa. Sumalangit daw ang kanyang kaluluwa. Pero meanwhile, because of 9522, ang sinasabi eh, Sabi nga nung chart na pinakita natin kanina, nag-gain tayo ng 1,106,723 sovereignty rights for exclusive economic zone, sacrificing 830,140 square kilometers of sovereignty. Ayan, mga kabansa. Ngayon, at tanong, anong diferensya ng sovereignty sa sovereignty rights? Ang sovereignty po ay base sa territorial land at sa maritime language, it is the generation of territorial sea. Ano yung ibig sabihin? Territorial land, territorial sea. Ownership. Pag-aari po ng Pilipinas, ah, ah, yeah. sa sovereignty rights, mga kabansa, hindi po pag-aari ng Pilipinas technically ang sovereignty rights o yung tinatalagang exclusive economic zone. Because under a specific treaty on clause, yung lamang bedrock, yung tubig, ilalim ng surface ang pwede natin i-harness for economic benefits while the surface of the water remains to be international waters and the aerospace on top of it international airspace. Anong diferensya? Sa sovereignty po as against sovereignty rights Itong airspace, pag-aari ng Pilipinas, yung surface of the water, pag-aari ng Pilipinas, and under the water, through the bedrock, bedrock lahat po yan, pag-aari ng Pilipinas. Ano ang mangyayari ngayon, mga kabansa? Pag nagsalubong at nagsabong ang sovereignty rights sa sovereignty, Eh di natural, pag nagsabog yan, mga kabansa, ang sovereignty sa sovereignty rights, ano mangyayari? Hindi ho pwedeng lumusot ang sovereignty rights sa sovereignty. Hindi pwedeng i-overlap ang sovereignty rights dahil merong may-ari ng territorial land at territorial sea. So even though you're 200 nautical miles from the shore of another coastal state, it will necessarily end when it hits the sovereign land or the so territorial sea of another state. Yan po ang weakness ng sovereignty, right? No? And I think that is self-explanatory. <laughs> For the simple reason na kung may may-ari, ikaw, di ba? Kung may may-ari, ay hindi tayo pwedeng mag-encroach doon. Yung ating rights ends where their sovereignty begins. Pero ang problema ngayon mga kabansa sa 
definition of terms sa paggamit ng different terminologies ay nakakaroon ng contradiction. At walang iba kundi ang ating Pangulo seems to be confused about the issues. So, let's go and play the video. Marcos is questioning the premise of China's proposals on the South China Sea dispute, particularly its 10 dash line in asserting control over the disputed waters. In a joint press conference with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Berlin, Marcos stresses that China's 10 dash line claim is not recognized by any country. According to the president, the Philippines did not reject China's proposals but questioned its premise in the territorial dispute. We have not rejected any proposals that China has made to us. Uh, but uh, the premise uh, is something that we question. And with that premise that uh, China has made is that their territory is, uh, uh, follows what is now uh, described as a 10 dash line. This is not recognized by any country, any international body, certainly not by the Philippines. The Department of Foreign Affairs earlier said the country could not consider several maritime-related proposals from China because they were against the Philippines' national interests. Marcos says there will be difficulty to move forward with discussions while China continues to intrude the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. According to Marcos, he has the duty as the president to defend the country's maritime and land-based territory and that he will continue to do so. In a separate speech before the Filipino community, Marcos gives assurance he will not allow other nations to claim Philippine territory amid the maritime row with China. Dahil nagkakaproblema po tayo, ay may ibang bansa na sinasabi yung ating teritoryo ay kanila pala. At eh, ngunit uh, sa asaan ninyo ay hindi po tayo papayag dahil maliwanag na maliwanag naman. Uh, ito ay bahagi ng Pilipinas. Ang problema, Mr. President, hindi maliwanag na maliwanag yan. At ang nagsasabi sa iyo ngayon ay si Adolfo Paglinawan. Kaya nga po, paglinawan natin ang katotohanan. Dahil gamit kayo ng gamit ng termino, ay hindi naman kayo nagbabasa o nag-check-check kung ano ang meaning. Ha? ang katumbas na kahulugan ng mga pinagsasabi ninyo. It is the Philippine premise that is defective, not China's. Ang inyo pong interpretation comes from the 2016 arbitral ruling that the nine dash line has no legal basis. No? Naging necessary po sa mga American and British lawyers ng Pilipinas mag tayo to the tune of 7 million U.S. dollars for these lawyers. Ha? The leader is there all, all under the right law of law firm. No? Sa isang arbitration, para i-demolish by lawfare, China's sovereignty in the South China Sea. Pero failing that, no? failing that, the Philippines claim west sa kaluran of the Philippines necessarily melts sovereignty, sovereign rights that cannot overlap sovereignty. Ay sinasabi nyo, maliwanag na maliwanag na mga pag-aari natin yan. No? Huwag po kayong magsinungaling, mga uh, aming Pangulo. Nakakahiya po tayo sa mundo. Dahil ang exclusive economic zone cannot protrude the territorial seas of another state. No? Oh, ito po ang conclusion ng arbitral ruling na binabanggit ninyo. Ha? Oh, sa so paragraph 270, 278, the maritime areas of the South China Sea encompassed by the relevant part of the Nine Dash Line are contrary to the convention and without lawful effect to the extent that they exceed the geographic and substantive limits of China's maritime entitlements under the convention. At their own clause. But own clause is only a single treaty. Obviously, hindi naman po siya the entirety of international law. Huh? Ano pa kaya 
אני פה מסתר רש"י, אבל לא, according to the proceedings of the Russian Academy of Science, the United States of America, there are over 250,000 international treaties that aim to foster global cooperation and most have failed to produce their intended effects. And in this case, ah, yung canard na inyong minimension is an obnoxious manipulation. You are putting words into China's mouth which is unsanitary. There is no need for any country to recognize the nine or ten dash line because sovereignty claims that China are not based on that drawing. And drawings are maps are only sources of information that reflect legal basis somewhere else. Oh, katulad ng treaty limits ng Pilipinas, drawing lang po yun. Hindi po yun ang base ng ating poder. Yun po ay base, katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, sa tatlong tratado. Oh, ayan. Ha? Now, saan base ang 9 or 10 dash line ng China? The most recent statutory construction of historical facts, starting with the first Sino-Japanese War of July 1898, the Treaty of Simonoseki that resolved it, the outbreak of the second Sino-Japanese War, and China's involvement with Allied forces of World War II, flowing through the Cairo Conference of 1943, reinforced by the Potsdam Declaration of 1945, the Treaty of San Francisco of 1951, completed by the Treaty of Taipei in 1952, with the People's Republic of China a successor in interest by virtue of the United Nations One China Resolution 2758, and finally, ito ang pinakamagiga, recognized by the Philippines in its joint communique with the People's Republic of China in 1975. They recognized that in eh. Oh, no 1975, wala pang umplus eh. Ibig nyo sabihin? Huh? Mga teritoryong ninakaw ng hapon sa China. Kanino na pa sa uli? Sa Pilipinas ba? Kaya sabi niyo, maliwanag na sa atin na eh, hindi tayo papayag. Eh, Jesus Mario, Joseph, mga kabansa, hindi na tayo papayag na mawala yan dahil wala pa kang ginagawa ang China. Nawala na tayo sa KIG na 70,000 at ngayon nawawala tayo na more 100 800,000 square kilometers. So, ano ang total niya? Almost, almost 900,000 square kilometers. Nawawala. Hindi pa po mapasok ang China. Baka bansa. Ha? No third party is also needed to recognize the arbitral ruling because the Philippines unilaterally initiated an international arbitration without the Chinese government's prior consent. And even our own Ambassador Rosario Manalo has explained already last week the arbitral tribunal handled the case ultra vires in abuse of authority and rendered an award that is illegal, null and void, and China neither accepts or recognizes it. Problema na ito, mga kamansa, is sarili nating Supreme Court decision confirms the arbitral exemption o yan, ginagamit ko na yung arbitration na pinagmamalaki nyo. If still relevant, only 16 out of OPRO signatories, ha? Only 16 out of 168 OPLUS signatories and only 16 out of 190 UN members have recognized the ruling. Huh? And out of the 16, 
15, 15 of them are allies of the United States. Yung panglabing isa, Estados Unidos. Oh. Ang irony nito, we pointed out last week, Estados Unidos joined the discussions in Omkos 1 that ended in about 1955 and Omkos 2 discussions that ended in 1960 and signed the Omkos that was adopted in 1982. But the U.S. withdrew. Why? Hindi niya ni-ratify it. So, ito, ang status of Indus is playing a particip particip as a participant in all this conflict as a third party and eh, hindi naman siya member ng UNCLOS. Oh, pero ginagamit niya ang UNCLOS at tinatawag niya rule-based order. Bakit? Eh, pabor sa kanya. Oh. At any rate, mga kabansa, the, it was not even dismissive of China's entitlements. Ah, all right. Ito ang sabi ng arbitral award about China's historic claim. Paragraph 272. In particular, ah, the tribunal emphasizes that nothing in this award should be understood to comment in any way on China's historic claim to the islands of the South China Sea. At hindi rin niya dinismiss yung entitlements ng China ang ganoong plus. Nor does the tribunal's decision that a claim of historical rights is not huh, compatible with the convention limit convention limit China's ability to claim maritime zones in accordance with the convention on the basis of such islands. <laughs> so, ano effect? Nag-slogan earing lang, nag-cherry picking, kumuha yung nine dash line at doon ang pinaiikot-ikot tayo, doon sa nine dash line na yon ang unang elemento ng adjudication of the Philippines. Drawing lang ho yan, hindi ho yan ang legal basis. Ha? Alright. So, halimbawa, yung inyong titulo to rin, yung inyong transfer certificate of title. Uh, usually, ho, may accompanying uh, survey yan, di ba? Oo. Oh. Ano ba niyo ba sabihin eh? Yung survey, yun ang pwede niyong gabitin na basis for claiming anything? Can you transfer? Can you sell the property on the basis of the survey? Kayo mga nag-aari ng lupa? Hindi po pwede. The survey is only uh, a drawing. Yung 9 dash line, 10 dash line is only a drawing. The survey is only reflective of what is included in the transfer certificate of title. And it is the transfer certificate of title that is a necessary document for the transfer. Kung ibebenta ninyo ang inyong luma. Hindi kayo pwedeng magbenta on the basis of the survey or location map. O klaro na ho ba? Ito ho, malupi. Kinong pirma ng Supreme Court natin. Ang sinabi ko, ha? tungkol sa historic rights ng China na hindi naman binigyan for jurisdiction ng arbitrary ruling. Alright? Ito po ang sabi. No? GR 187-167 states that OCLOS and its ancillary baselines, baselines law play no role in the acquisition, enlargement, or as petitioners claim, diminution of territory. Ito po ang exact quote sa Supreme Court. Under traditional international law typology, states acquire or conversely lose territory through occupation, accretion, cession, prescription, 
not by executing multilateral treaties on the regulations of sea use rights or enacting statutes to comply with the treaty's terms to delimit maritime zones and continental shelves. Akong krus po ay walang poder sa pagbibigay ng sovereignty. Tuloy, territorial claims to land features are outside the Oklos. Is Supreme Court po natin ang nagsasabi nito. And are instead governed by the rules of general international law. The last paragraph of preamble of Oklos states that matters not regulated by this convention continue to be governed by the rules and principles of general international law. Kaya kayong mga nagsasabi that all clause ha, supersedes previous treaties, historical claims, and customary international law, bumalik po kayo sa law school. Ha? At mismo, in the case of the Kalayan Island Group, mismo po itong si Justice Carpio ang nagsasabi na had Congress in Republic Act 1922 includes the KIG and the Scarborough Shoal as part of Philippine archipelago. Adverse legal effects would have ensued. Kung klinin natin sa Republic Act 95-22 na ang Kalayaan Island Group ay parte ng Pilipinas Philippine Archipelago at Scarborough Shoal. Adverse legal effects would have ensued. The Philippines would have committed a breach of two provisions of Oglos. So ano? Ano sinasabi ng 95-22? Na Kalayaan Island Group as Part, as an archipelago by itself, part of the Philippine archipelago, hindi pwede. At ang Scarborough Shoal ay hindi rin pwede ipasok sa Philippine archipelago. Ito ang eksplanasyon ni Antonio Carpio sa kanyang column sa Inquirer. Quote, the Philippines claimed everything. I-flash natin ito sa screen please. Sa bandang ilalim. The Philippines claimed everything within the polygula, polygonal lines as Philippine territory, even waters and resources beyond the territorial seas of high-tide geologic features within the polygonal lines. However, PD 1596 still violated OMPLUS in so far as the Philippine territory, waters and resources beyond 12 nautical miles from high tide features within the KIG polygonal, polygon, polygonal, I'm sorry, polygonal lines. The magistrate. So in effect, pinatay po ni Carpio ang Kalayaan Group and 70,000, 70,000 square kilometers of what otherwise is Philippine territory. Oh. Now, as the debates go, punta tayo sa pangalawa. Yung aspeto, how the uh, arbitrary ruling affects certain features of our claimed EEZ. No EEZ applies in the Yugen and Scarborough Shoal. The paragraph 805, huh? it will clear and Scarborough Shoal the traditional fishing ground for fishermen, fishermen of many nationalities. It is in Habila sa Pilipinas siya. In fact, the reverse is true. Ang may karapatagdan are fishermen of many nationalities. Huh? Negating the exclusivity of the Philippine claim to 
ang exclusive economic zone in Scarborough. Pakinggan natin kung paano ang isang simple fisherman na si Jolie Saligan, galing sa Masinlo, ay nilekturan si Coast Guard Commodore J. Tariela on effective control as customary laws determining basis for sovereignty. Let's play the video please twice. Twice. Karapat na doon sir, nasa mga Chinese na eh, sila na nagbabantay doon eh. Kasi nga yung karapatan doon sir, nasa mga Chinese na eh, sila na nagbabantay doon eh. Oh, ang yan ninyo, mga kabansa, from a mere fisherman. So, paragraph 809, sinabi din na yung traditional fishing rights na yan are not absolute or impervious to regulation and may necessarily be for conservation or to restrict environmentally harmful practices. Eh sino po ang sinasabi nitong fisherman na ito na merong pag-aari dyan? By what right? Ha? Ang ginagawa po dyan ng China ay law enforcement agencies exercising effective control of its occupation of the area after we surrendered it to them pagkatapos ng Scarborough standoff ng 2012. Not by force, but by default. Ha? At doon naman po sa iyong insyol, pwede ba mag-operate ang AEC doon? Well, according to paragraph 1192, ay yung insyol is quintessentially militarized situation. Debunking, mga kabansa, the application of any Philippine claims to an exclusive economic zone of 200 nautical miles there. At ang panghuli po natin na i-expose ngayon ay itong unilateral session kasi po session. Sabi nila, ha, dito sa Maritime Zone Law, lahat ng mga artificial islands and structures that were built within samot ng ating claim to 200 nautical miles from our shores, identifying it as a claim for exclusive economic zone, will belong to the Philippine government. E nagtayo na po dyan ang mga facility. Ang Malaysia, ang Vietnam, at ang China. So, paano nyo ngayon ha, kukunin yan ha, sa mga countries na yan? No? Alam po ninyo mga kamansa, huwag tayong, huwag tayong masyadong swapang. Huwag tayong masyadong swapang. Dito, meron pa tayong tinatawag na West Philippine Sea. Ano ba yung West Philippine Sea na yan? Ha? A Philippine Coast Guard officially corrects President Marcos sweeping statements in Germany attacking China. He is emphatic that Philippine claim of sovereignty and sovereignty rights in the so-called quote, West Philippine Sea cannot be supported by the international community for the simple reason it does not exist. Yung po West Philippine Sea is not registered in the UN system. Yan po ay isang slogan na crinate lamang ng isang WIMPI Administrative Order No. 29 ni Presidente Benigno Aquino III at hindi, hindi, hindi po yan batas. It is not even recorded in the International Hydrographic Association because ang mapa natin doon na sinumiti Ah, na hindi pala sinumit ng Namriya. At ang mapa na ginawa ng Namriya is therefore yet unofficial. Our territorial claim to the South China Sea has in fact no map. Wala pong mapa. Sabi ko nga, incomplete. 
At sa observation din, justice have delay sa incomplete ang 9522. Mga kabansa. Ha? Eh, Pilipinos are already being asked to prepare to fight in a war without knowing the location or the exact geographical coordinates, longitude and latitude of the so-called territory that they will be fighting for. And even assuming na lahat na nandun sa ating 200 nautical miles around ay effective na just because we say it. At pwede na natin samsamin yung mga tinayo ng uh, Malaysia doon, tinayo ng China doon, tinayo ng Vietnam doon. Eh siguro naman kung ganyan ang kanilang logic at pag-iisip mga kamansa. Eh magsususpetsa na kayo na may mga candidates na sa National Mental Hospital dito. May mga nasisiraan na ng ulo. At deliberately may mga taong nagtutwista ng mga facts on the ground dahil meron silang mga vested interest. No? So, paano? Kung gusto niya talaga, nasamsamin niya, there are only two ways. Gera o diplomasya. Ha? Gera o diplomasya. Hindi uubra yung megaphone tactics ni Bongbong Marcos. Kasi nagdadagdag lang yan ang fuel to the conflict. Ha? At itong warmongering media and the Western press ay nagdidikta lamang ng narrative ni Bongbong Marcos dyan sa South China Sea conflict. Alright? The arbitral award did not rule on territorial issues but only on Maritime entitlements under Hong Cruz. Yung ba ay sarado katoliko na? Hindi po. It is subject to challenge. Kaya nga may conflict. Kaya nga po may dispute. Eh ang problema mga kabansa is that the Philippines is in denial of the existence of a dispute. Ayan. Ha? Ha? We are in denial of the existence of a dispute. Ang problema, we are only a small power. And often, lalo na ito si Gimbochidoro, has often been accusing China of bad faith. Ay, hindi tayo pwede magsimula o kausapin ng China unless they show some seriousness or good faith. Gimbochidoro. Alam mo, Gibo, in paragraph 1198 ng arbitral ruling na winawagay mo sa mga audience mo, ito ang sinasabi. The root of the disputes presented by the Philippines in this arbitration lies not in any intention on the part of China or the Philippines to infringe on the legal rights of the other. But rather, in fundamentally different understanding of the respective rights under the Convention in the waters of the South China Sea. Iba ko lang ang perspectives. Kaya hindi nyo pwedeng i-deny the existence of conflict. So, kung merong disagreement, how do you resolve it? And in all close, you have to resolve it peacefully. The position of China is so simple. It requires only common sense to appreciate. However, government officials love to obfuscate issues so that they milk the treasury. China's red line is its territorial sovereignty and they, that they have fought hard to regain after 100 years of colonial humiliation. Do you think easily and without even our properly negotiating with them? What not asking for it, negotiating for it properly. 
ay ibibigay na lang nila yan at our behest. Excuse me. Huh? Huh? Excuse me. Huh? Hindi ho po nangyayari yan. Kaya mga kabansya, nagkaroon tayo ng breakdown of diplomacy. No? And relations between Beijing and Manila have deteriorated over a series of events involving Chinese ships in the areas of the South China Sea that are part of the Philippines' claimed exclusive economic zone. This deterioration of relations has led to China adopting this, post this posture. Let us play this video of Xi Jinping. Rise in the South China Sea, Chinese President Xi Jinping urges the country's military to prepare for maritime conflicts. He also said the military should be ready to protect Beijing's maritime rights and interests. He issued those orders during a meeting with the armed forces at this year's National People's Congress or the Chinese Parliament. Xi also called on the military to enhance strategic capabilities in cyberspace and to build a cyberspace defense system. An official of the U.S. State Department expresses concern over China's use of intimidation in its maritime row with the Philippines. More from Bianca Dava. Beijing accuses Washington anew of being a troublemaker in the South China Sea. This after the U.S. condemned China's latest maritime aggression against Philippine vessels that left four Filipino Navy personnel injured. China urges the U.S. to refrain from using the Philippines as a pawn to destabilize the South China Sea. The Philippines also needs to refrain from being manipulated by the U.S. Lessons from history tell us that a pawn will only end up being abandoned. The U.S. State Department meanwhile asserts Washington will maintain its presence in Southeast Asia. The United States continues through our own operations to be physically present uh, in the region on a daily basis and we continue to fly, sell and operate uh, everywhere that international law allows, demonstrating thereby that all countries share those same rights. The U.S. State Department also criticized China's recent actions as destabilizing. I think we've seen in a number of instances where the People's Republic of China has taken a number of steps in the in the South China Sea that both run counter to international law, but that also uh, uh, utilize coercion um, uh, to intimidate partners uh, in ways that we find deeply uh, unacceptable uh, and destabilizing. <laughs> Pero anong lumabas doon ang presidente natin ay nasa uh, ibang bansa. He visited Australia, alright? First sa Canberra, then sa Melbourne. And then he went to Germany. Anong lumabas mga kabansa? But since February 2023, nagsubmit na pala ang China ng 11 proposals. At ni isa rito, ay hindi ho binigyan ng, ng aksyon ng Department of Foreign Affairs. At ang sinasabi ng Department of Foreign Affairs, mga kabansa, ah, at ng ating Pangulo, ay meron daw mga proposals na unconstitutional na ang hindi naman daw nire-reject ni Marcos ang mga proposals na ito kundi kini-question ang mga premise. At meron pa akong lumabas na meron pala mga doon sa 11 proposals, meron pala hiningi ang Pilipinas mga kabansa. Hindi lahat yun ang galing sa China. So, kung may problema sa mga present ng China, ano ang naging aksyon ng ating Department of Foreign Affairs? Doon sa mga hinihit ng Pilipinas sa China at nagbigay na ang China ng proposal tungkol sa mga yon. Alam niyo mga kabansa, ha? In the recent years, the scale of joint maritime exercises between the U.S. and the Philippines, including the South China Sea, has reached new highs. 
From September last year to now, the U.S. Philippine Joint Patrols in the South China Sea has increased fivefold. At ngayon, hindi lamang Australia, hindi lamang Germany, pati Japan, mga kabansa. Aalis na naman ang ating Pangulo pupunta sa Estados Unidos para makipag-meeting sa mga Merkano at mga Hapon, mga kabansa. So USA, Japan, at Pilipinas. Yan po ang meeting ng USA, Yakuza, at Takusa. Mga kabansa, sino yung Takusa? Yun ho yung takot sa USA at saka takot sa asawa. <laughs> so, huh? this practice of playing double standard and making distant friends while attacking close ones exposes the Philippines' ulterior motives. Not to promote the normalization of South China Sea situation, not to resolve the disputes with China, but to continuously involve external forces in the South China Sea to continue to fish troubled waters and achieve unilateral benefits. Yan po. Marcos, you have not only poked the bear, at halatang halata when you use this idiom, na Amerikano nagsusulat ng speech mo, because this is an American slang, poking the bear. E mali naman dahil ang bear ay rasya. Ha? You should have at least adapted it that you ha, have not shaken the dragon from its nest. Ito po ay yellow flag sa iyo, Mr. President, that the Senate bill is, or the Maritime Zones Act, is an attempt to put the legal veneer on our illegal claims and actions in the South China Sea and make the situation in the South China Sea more complex. So complex, it may court economic sanctions and limitation of access, maybe even a hot war. Yan ang problema natin, mga kabansa. So, pag nagsalita si Marcos, tandaan ninyo, puntusan ninyo kung saan paroroon. Bakit parami ng parami ang base militar ng Amerika sa Pilipinas? At hindi naman daw yan ang puposisyon para natakay ng China. Eh bakit kayo nagtatayo ng naval base ngayon sa Batanes? na nakatunghod na doon sa puwitan ng Taiwan. Oh, eh, yan ay walang pakialam dyan ang yun. Excuse me? Ah? We have to see through this president. And dahil Holy Week ngayon, ang ating quotable quote comes from the Bible. Proverbs 14. Verses 14 to 16. The faithless will be fully repaid for their ways. Karma po yan. And the good rewarded for theirs. Sino faithless dito? Sino wayward? Sino ang in violation of? At sino yung good? The simple believe anything, and this is for you, my audience, the simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. So don't just take this president hook, line, and sinker, and lahat na naman re-report sa kanila because they speak with a fourth tongue. They speak, double speak. The wise fear the Lord and shun evil. But the fool is hot-head and yet feels secure. So, sino ay insecure? Sino ang hindi makatulong? Who is having a sleepless night in the Pasig River? Overlooking the Pasig River. I leave you with that message. This is Ado Paglinawan, ang maestro.
Maraming maraming salamat po.